Welcome to the Body Smart Podcast, where we remove roadblocks to fitness and health to empower you to master your health habits. We help you become body smart. Um, so here we go. I'm excited to try to do what we did last time, uh, or what we weren't able to do last time. We tried to do this uh, same topic, but from a trailhead, and we picked the wrong trailhead because we had zero reception and so it didn't go through it was terrible so we're going to hit this topic again because we feel like it's really important so we're going to talk about the four key areas of performance so performing the way you want so you know performance uh is different for every person some people are looking for like high performance like i want to crush my next race type of a thing and some people are like i want to perform well enough to you know, be able to do all the things I love to do, but my, my goal is just to feel great by the end of the run and not want to die or, or feel like you're dying, right? And so, um, yeah, it's, it's different for every person, but we can continue to progress and make improvements in our performance, um, no matter what stage or what our goals are. And we've talked about that before, about how if we're tailing off in our performance, um, then that's, or I guess if we're trying to maintain, we will eventually tail off in our performance. So our fitness will decrease um, if we're trying to maintain. So we actually have to keep improving to be able to maintain where we're at. Um, and so uh, we want to look then at four key areas of performance. And this is what we do here in the clinic with every patient. We want to look at mobility, stability, strength, and power so that we can dial that in and see exactly how those things are playing into your specific health and your specific performance. Um, those are four foundational areas of if you want to do well and be healthy, uh, you have to kind of have somewhat, uh, you know, proficiency over over those areas to, to perform well and stay healthy and avoid injury and all those good things. So um, those four key areas then, uh, mobility, stability, strength, and power. We actually test those using the uh, Body Smart Performance Index. So all of those of you who have done that have been through that process before. So let's talk about why those areas are so important. So mobility is the first one. Uh, thoughts on mobility, Mark? What What do you yeah. think? It's, it's need, my favorite need. thing. <laughs> no, so I think this is a really important foundational one. Um, you know, all of these are interrelated and they build upon one another to, to a degree, but we want to kind of find that sweet spot in terms of, of mobility. Um, and so mobility includes flexibility, but it, it's not that alone. It's right. really the, it's, it's really the ability. Um, like does our body have the ability to meet the, um, motion or movement demands of whatever it is, right? Like, and it can be simple. So things from like, can I reach behind myself and put on a seat belt <laughs> to, um, you know, high level performers, right? Can I, like, am I a gymnast and I can do a back handspring, right? I have the mobility to move my body in, in that way to accomplish the, the demands of the task. Right. And so the reason that I make that designation is because, you know, you'll see a lot of stuff out there that talks about us needing to have like a certain level of flexibility, right? Or like, learn to do the splits or, or, or whatever, or like, oh, you need to stretch out your hamstrings so that you're a better runner. And what we find is that we really only need the amount, the, the range of motion, again, to allow us to do the thing. And so, for example, me, I cannot touch my feet, right? Like, I, 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 if, if, if I was meant to touch my, my feet, they'd be where my knees are at. Um, <laughs> but, but, but it allows me to do what I need to do, right? Like I can still run, I can still hike, I can still do all the things that, that I need to do, and it really doesn't prevent me. And actually, arguably, <clears throat> uh, well, the, the, time out real quick. I would argue you can touch your feet if you bend your knee. If your knee is straight, you cannot touch your feet. You can put sure. your own shoes on. Okay, just making I sure. My own just shoes on. Yes, I am not. Okay. I'm not 900 years old. Um, <laughs> good, good, good thing. Yeah. Just, so just with, clarifying. With, with the legs straight. Um, but, but so much of what you'd see is like, oh, you know, you need to get that range of motion so you can touch your feet. Like it's so important to touch your feet. What we actually find is that, um, some of the top runners in the world actually have fairly tight hamstrings. And were we to, to really focus on stretching out to the point that I could tolerate 
um, getting down to my feet, it, it, there, there's actually some suggestion that would impair performance. And that's one of the things to remember too about flexibility is that um, a lot of it is improving our tolerance to the amount of stretch versus actually like lengthening right. the tissues. And so there's, there's some problems that we run into with um, getting too mobile, right? With, with stretching too far. Um, it can actually impair our performance and it can actually lead to a, a risk of injury. So do you want to talk, Cameron, about what you always tell people in terms of like, um, like ankle sprains and, uh, and yeah. 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 Well, so that's, good, that's a good one for the stability one too, but, but I think it also works in terms of, of mobility. Mobility. Right. So yeah, like, like Mark was saying, flexibility is always so uh, emphasized that, that people have adequate flexibility and that really isn't all of mobility. When we have too much flexibility for the task we are, are doing, so a runner doesn't need gymnast flexibility. And when you have too much flexibility, the problem is, is so if you're on a trail run or, or a walk even and you step off that curb on your walk or run and your ankle starts to roll, if you have too much flexibility, you may not sense the ankle rolling and make those automatic corrective movements to prevent the ankle from rolling. And so because your stretch tolerance is so high, you'll roll that ankle because you don't sense the stretch. And so it becomes actually somewhat problematic. Same thing in running. What they've found is that hamstring length, the reason why, well, there's a couple of reasons why, um, that it doesn't really matter. In fact, can be somewhat detrimental if we're too flexible and, and is beneficial if we're somewhat on the you know tight side of things. Um, it's not actually pathologically tight. It just feels tight, I think is a big key differ differentiator. And so one of the things there is it provides us more power if we're somewhat tight or we have a lot of like hamstring, uh, you know, what we call the passive elastic component. Uh, when that, when you keep the elasticity in it so that when you put it on stretch, it can rebound, that's a good thing. So we want that as a runner because we don't need a ton of flexibility. The other thing that happens is as you extend your knee all the way out, um, that's actually where all the hamstring strains happen in running. It's not as you kick back behind you. It's actually when you go to extend that knee out right before you touch the ground. When that knee extends out, your body can't sense that it's hit end range until you kick too far, and that's where we strain it. And so by having that increased stretch tolerance, because it doesn't stretching doesn't actually really make the tissues longer necessarily. We just get more used to being at end range. And so it doesn't sense that and doesn't give that feedback of like, oh, tighten up because we're at end range. So you remove that component. And now all of a sudden we kick too far and we cause more damage than we do help. And so that's, that's the reason why flexibility may be a little bit different than mobility. We have to be able to move in all the ways that we need to move, like Mark said, but we don't necessarily need flexibility beyond the task that we're doing and it can actually be detrimental if we have too much of it. So mobility is foundational and you have to be able to move the ways you need to move, right? Um, if you were an archer back in mid medieval ages and you couldn't draw your arrow from your bow or from your whatever that's quiver. called, quiver. quiver, I could not think of that word, couldn't draw your arrow from your quiver, that's a problem if you lack that range, right? And so that would be an area where we would want to work on the flexibility to be able to do that as part of their overall mobility. So mobility has some qualitative, um, you know, components to it that can you move well? Can you move smoothly and in a coordinated fashion? And, and so that's an important part of your mobility is can you coordinate those movements as well? And that leads us into stability. So can you move in a coordinated way is really important along with having the available range of motion, not necessarily flexibility, but available range of motion. Um, but then 
can you then support your body and bear some of the forces that we need to in a coordinated way? That is what stability is. If we can hold that stable as we do that activity so that we're not you know, moving too far. If when I go to plant my leg and change directions, can the hip, can the knee, can the ankle bear that and, and fire in the right ways to coordinate that movement and allow me to bear that load, right? So that's the stability factor. Does everything fire when it's supposed to fire so that I can, you know, have the motion go the way I want it to go. <laughs> and so that there's that uh, a little bit of a fine line between the, the qualitative component of mobility and, and the coordination of the stability that everything fires in the right timing and sequencing to allow me to do that movement. Hopefully that makes sense and isn't too nerdy, but that, that, that differentiation is, is important to see that we, we not only have to have the mobility component, but then the stability of can I bear that load, which kind of leads into strength as well. It's, a, it's really a continuum of movement. You have to have enough strength to bear that load as well, no matter how coordinated and even if the, the timing of those muscle firings happen at the right time, if you don't have sufficient strength, it doesn't matter, you're going to overpower that. And so, so uh, you know, stability then becomes really important that we have everything firing when it needs to fire so that we can uh, have those coordinated movements um, go essentially the way we want them to with every single stride of running then, that's, that's important that we have that work from step one through step 5,000, um, that everything keeps working in timing and sequencing. And so working on your stability of being able to, to move and have those movements look the way we want them to, that's really important. Yeah. Well, the way Thoughts that I like, on that? Yeah, the way that I like to think about it is uh, a symphony, right? You need all these different component parts, the, the strings and the brass and the percussion. Um, but if all of them just start playing randomly, then it's just going to sound, it's big. <laughs> no one's going to want to listen, right? It's going to be cacophony. But when every uh, instrument comes in at the right time and stays on the right rhythm, um, then you get this beautiful coordinated symphony. And that's the same thing with our movement, right? When the muscles are talking to each other the, the way that they're meant to, um, when all the signals are going right, then we move in a really beautiful, fluid, healthy way. Um, and it's all variations on a theme, right? No one moves, like there's no one like perfect mode of human movement, right? Like this is all the perfect components. Um, it's, it's kind of all built around that, that general theme. Um, and so if we are, are lacking any part of that, then just things are like injuries are going to be more likely to, to, to pop up. And so what we yeah. see is, um, you know, I, I love that Cameron pulled out that strength component because that is a really important mo uh, part. And we'll talk about that more in a minute. But what happens sometimes is that people have the strength to allow for the movement but they don't have the coordination, right? The muscles aren't talking to each other well. And when that happens, then it also doesn't matter how good your strength is. Like you're going to be more likely to get injured if, if, if the, the movements aren't coupled in the right way, right? If muscles aren't turning on uh, when they need to, um, you're going to be able to not control that movement as well, right? So we see that a lot of times right. with, with people and, and their knees, right? The hips aren't doing a good job at controlling the movement, at, at firing when they should. And so the force has to go somewhere, right? We have to bear that load somewhere. It doesn't just disappear. And so often that goes down to the knee. And so people complain a lot, a lot of knee problems. That's one of the that's right. one of the things we look at. Um, and, well, so I, I would, sorry to interrupt, but yeah. I would say, so that's the difference between like, you can still have a coordinated movement, like your foot still lands where you want it to land. <laughs> Right, so it's still a coordinated movement, but it's not a stable coordinated movement because you're, the timing and sequencing of, of the way your muscles control that movement may not be optimal so that your, your knee is diving in too much because the hip isn't firing when it needs to to control that. So even if it has enough strength, it may be that we're just not doing that component of, of firing it correctly. So even we have sufficient mobility and coordination, so it's landing in the right spot, the foot, 
that the hips just not keeping the rest of the chain in order. So like there's definitely a continuum and those those phases kind of overlap one another. Yeah. Anyway. Well, I like that you brought that up because we have seen some people, you know, be frustrated. It's like, well, I'm doing everything right. Like I'm strong. I lift this many times a week. I do this. And, and sometimes it really isn't a strength issue. It's, it's being able to coordinate that movement. And there's two important parts, right? We need to have um, anticipatory stability, right? So before we ever actually make a movement, our, our body, like our muscles make certain actions. So as I'm thinking about raising my arm, right, before I even raise it, muscles in my back activate to stabilize the back to kind of counterbalance that mm. weight, even though my arm isn't super heavy. And so that that's part of our uh, your arms are pretty heavy, Mark. Your biceps are huge. <laughs> you know, personal problem. Tell you what, <laughs> but um, but having that, uh, like knowing what patterns you should do, right? And so as we work on stability in different ways, our body is going to be better at um, anticipating what we're going to do, like where our foot's going to move, where our body's going to be in space. So that's the first important component. But then it also needs to have a, a, a reactive stability, right? When we kind of move in an unexpected way, can our body coordinate other movements so that we stay in, 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 a, in a comfortable place, in a good place, in a safe place? So again, that yeah. goes back to the, the uh, ankle sprain example, right? Is there's, there's one, like, do I put my foot in the right place? But then two, like when I come off of a, like there's, there's the grounds uneven or I go off of a curb or something like that, does my body have the ability to quickly react and change my movement pattern, change the muscle activation so that I control that versus my ankle just being like, pop, oh, I sprained my ankle, right? <laughs> like right. that, both of those components are important and both of those are, are trainable. Um, right. Which is and, and, they, Okay. Well, so honestly, that that example, though, uses all four components, mm, right? Yeah, yeah. So if I go, uh, we saw this actually this weekend. We were up in the woods, uh, crossing creeks and stuff like that, hiking. You'd step on a rock that was a little more mobile than you realized, right? So you're trying to cross a creek and that rock shifts. Do I have the mobility for my ankle to move in a way that doesn't just pitch me over, right? Okay, so I need proper mobility to survive this shifting rock, right? Do I have the stability to, to or, well, and I have to sense that the rock is moving. That's a mobility component, that proprioception, right? Do my tendons, ligaments, joints, as they shift, does it tell me, oh, that rock is moving so that I can make corrective movements? When I go to make those corrective movements, are they coordinated and do, do the muscles fire in the right sequence for me to correct and bring the rock either back or move my, that foot off of that rock fast enough, right? So there's our stability. Strength, do I have enough strength that when I go to move that I can the way I want to, right? So that's the strength component is do I, can I produce enough force to actually move it the way I want to move it? And then power is a component of force and time. So can I move quickly enough, even if I'm strong enough, can I, can I produce enough force quickly enough that I can correct that movement or that I can you know, move my leg to the next thing? Can I move quickly enough that I can save it? So can I sense it? Can I you know, stabilize it and correct it? Do I have the strength to overcome the force that I'm falling from? And can I move it quickly enough because I can, I have enough strength that I can move quickly enough. And, and so there's kind of where power plays in it's force and time coupled, if that makes sense. So here's a great example. I, I was testing somebody the other day who lacked power. So he was sufficiently strong and, and we see this a lot of time when people are overweight, they actually are, are usually fairly strong because they're they're having to lift, you know, I think of people that are, you know, 400 pounds. So we'll take an extreme example. They're actually really, really strong. To be able to lift their body is takes a lot of force. So their strength is high, but their force compared to the amount of mass that they have to move and to be able to do so quickly enough. So if you ask somebody that's 400 pounds to jump up onto a box or something, for example, 
that's going to be really hard because they can't produce enough power for the amount that they have to move quickly enough to get up onto the box. Hopefully that makes sense. And, and so that's power is do I have enough strength to explosively move quickly enough? And so we see that a lot with running injuries or or performance, you know, when we want to start running instead of just walking or jogging. Do we have enough to kind of explode from one foot to the next and actually have that flight phase of gait? That's what running is. And so running takes a lot of power because you're, you're essentially taking a power step every single step. And so, you know, jumping up onto a box, we use that a lot in, in our testing because it requires a lot of power. And so if you can't jump up onto a box once, it may be hard for you to run very far in a coordinated uh, fashion that you can correct from stepping off that curb and things like that. So your injury rest risk is going to be a lot lower if you have enough power to do the box jump. You probably have enough power to save yourself from a rock that shifts in the creek as well. Right. Does that make sense? I, I hope that does. Um, yeah, those components though, all, all the way through, mobility, stability, strength, power, they really are part of the one continuum that moves, you know, from just being able to move to being able to move quickly, powerfully, and in, in a coordinated fashion. They all kind of are this big continuum of, of healthy movement and performing well. Yeah. I want to go back to one thing that you said, which I absolutely loved, and I think is such an important point to pull out, is when you're talking about that, that ankle example, the strength, like, do you have the strength to move in the way that you want to move? Um, what having all of these key areas of performance does is it gives you options, it gives you options of mm -hmm. movement, it gives you options of strategy. And that's important because our bodies are really, our bodies are professional cheating machines, right? Like yeah. they just want to get from point A to point B in the easiest, most efficient way possible. <clears throat> and when we don't have options, right? When we don't have the power option, when we don't have the strength option, the body can still get from point A to point B, right? Um, it's just how is the quality of that movement and how does it affect us and what's our likelihood of injury? So when yeah. we have a ton of different movement options, when we're kind of maxed out in mobility and stability and strength and power, we have so many different things to choose from um, to really keep us moving in a, in a good and in a healthy way um, to make sure that we're not getting injured. But when we don't have the strength, right, we might have to just use some of, uh, you know, use the, the elasticity of our, of our tendons to kind of control the movement, right, which can lead to us um, getting things like, you know, ACL injuries or, you know, you get, uh, the the tendon that runs you get that nut runner's knee right um, mm -hmm. on the front of your knee like that bothers you or you're more liable to have ankle sprains things like that because you didn't have the strength or power you just had to rely on other components which means that you're more likely to get injured or again back to that um, you know if the hips aren't doing a good job of controlling themselves then a lot of that force gets transferred down to the knee or down to the foot and ankle and so we see injuries there and so that's a really mm -hmm. important thing to think about is that when especially with with strength right step strength is just such a foundational thing um is that it just expands your options we talk yeah. all the time about um this this idea of capacity versus load and we want our capacity to always be higher than the load right so we want to have more of a reserve than really anything that we would do in a day um yeah so that's why like the exercise important uh, component is so important is that it allows us the the freedom to pursue whatever recreational things that we want to do it gives us those foundational components so that we go can go out and explore our world and have fun in our world and right. really live life on our terms um, and not have to worry about running from injury to injury to injury right it's all about getting our capacity up to its highest level in all these areas, frankly, in mobility, in stability, in strength, in power, so that whatever comes our way, um, we can handle, right? If someone's like, hey, let's go do Ben Lomond, we can say, yeah, let's do it, right? We don't have to, yeah. well, I don't know if I can handle that. So I think that's yeah. a really important point to, to, to pull out, and I'm, I'm glad that you said that, right? That idea of, like, do we have the, the capacity to do the things that we want to do in the way that we want to do them? 
Right. And that that's the key is do you do you possess that capacity? And, and so hopefully you're building that capacity that the exercises we've given you in the program are helping you build that capacity. We talk about that all the time, load versus capacity. So along those lines, are there questions that any of you have regarding these four stages and, and kind of your current capacity? Um, you know, are, are there questions that you have? I, I see that Jason, Shannon, Christy, you're still on here. Um, yeah. I would, I'd love to hear, you know, any questions you might have about the different phases. So mobility, stability, strength, power of, of kind of, you know, where you're at or what, you know, might be uh, something you feel like you need to work on or something you haven't considered. Um, would love to hear uh, any feedback from you guys about any of those areas and, and what you've seen in the past that may or may not have gone well. Um, yeah. Uh, always, always interested to get questions from the, from the peanut gallery, as it were, um, to see, you know, how, how can we make sure that we're meeting your needs in addressing these areas? Like, you know, we tested this when we first started, um, when you first joined the program, we, we did the, the BSPI, the Body Smart Performance Index, and we got a score for where you were at. Um, that is such an important thing to us to be able to track that. Um, and test that later to see where have we made improvements and what do we still need to work on. And so, yeah, does anybody have any questions there? I'd love to, to answer anything there. So uh, I know I kind of put you on the spot, but definitely if you do have questions, um, feel free to, to ask those in um, here in Geneva anytime in any of the threads. Definitely make sure to ask those questions. And then we actually expand upon this idea in, uh, so we have what we call the BSPI explainer, where we talk about the Body Smart Performance Index and explain what that's all about. So check out that video in Zendler. Um, it, it's in that first part about uh, avoiding and overcoming injury. Um, so check that out for sure. And then any, uh, any questions you might have, definitely hit us up about that. But we go into that a little bit more. We go into... Um, in, in Zendler. So make sure you're going through the course, taking checking out those modules. That strength versus capacity topic we hit really hard in a couple of different ways. And I think that's so, or load versus capacity, um, I think that's so critical um, for the long-term health of your body and being able to keep going, keep moving, so you understand how our body uses um, its current capacity and how when building up our load tolerance, we've got to be careful not to overdo it and that we keep that balanced out in, in the right way. And so if you follow those principles, you'll stay healthy and be able to defy aging and keep going and doing all the things you love to do forever. So um, yeah, definitely if you have questions, drop them in the comments and we'll get to them either next week or we'll, we'll answer them uh, as we can right away. Um, thanks so much, Mark, for hopping on. Thanks uh, everybody for joining. Had a good crew in here today, so thank you, thank you, and we will catch you on the next episode. Uh, Thursday, we are chatting again about how to overcome and avoid injury, so excited to have you on that call. We'll see you then. Thanks for listening to the Body Smart Podcast. Join us in the Body Smart community on Facebook to share your successes or ask a question for our next episode. Now get out there and take the next step toward living your active lifestyle.